Last time we covered how to make a square move around the screen in eight directions. This time we're going to be doing something more interesting. We'll make the square rotate to follow along with our mouse, and when we left click, we'll now fire projectiles. This will help us lay the foundation for any good top-down shooter, so let's go ahead and get started. Back in our Unity editor, our scene is left with our player, which has a player movement script. We also have these four square objects, which are these four walls. Right now they just have a sprite renderer, but I'm gonna go ahead and add a box collider 2D to each one of these. And you'll notice if I disable the sprites, we see our bounding walls. So on our player game object, we have this player movement script. You could make a new script here to handle your shooting, but I'm gonna go ahead and just expand this player movement script. Before we do that, we wanna keep things named properly so we don't get into trouble later on. It's not required, but it's a good practice to make sure your code is maintainable. And keeping things named correctly is one way of doing that. So I'm gonna click on our player movement script and press F2 and rename this to player controller. And again, this is the script we made in the previous video. So here's the code currently. But if you want to take a more in-depth look at it, make sure you watch the previous video. So we renamed the file, but now we got to rename this class. So in Visual Studio Code, I'm going to click on Player Movement and press Control F2. You can also right-click and change all occurrences. And this will rename everywhere we're calling Player Movement. So we'll now call this Player Controller. So we're going to need to add two variables here. The first one will make more sense. We need to add a private variable of Vector2, and we'll call this Mouse Position. We want our player to face where our mouse is moving in the game, and we obviously need the mouse position to do that. But in order for us to actually calculate our mouse's position in Unity, we need a reference to the camera. You can use camera.main, but I would never recommend that, as it's just doing like a hard-coded search for your main camera and your scene, so it's not ideal. Uh, but what we can do is make a public variable, so public camera scene camera. Before we forget, we'll select our player. And under player controller, we should now see scene camera and we'll drag in our main camera game object. There it is. So since we already have our process inputs method set up, this is very easy for us. We want to capture the mouse position. So in order for us to do that, what we can do is say mouse position is equal to scene camera dot screen to world point. What screen to world point does is when your mouse is in the game view, it takes what the camera sees and then converts that into your world space position. So what we're converting is the actual mouse input. So we can say input dot mouse position that Unity provides us. And that's it, that will capture a vector two of the mouse position for us. So now we can actually utilize this in move. And what I'm gonna do is actually rotate our player to follow the mouse. So what we can do is say vector two aim direction is equal to the mouse position minus the rigid body position. This is where it's gonna get a little mathy for people, but we need to calculate the angle that we want to rotate by. So what we can do is say float aim angle is equal to math f is the class dot atan2. And what we wanna provide is for the y value aim direction dot y and for the x value aim direction dot x. We then wanna multiply this float by math f dot rad two degrees, so radians to degrees, minus 90f. So if you're not brushed up on your linear algebra, you're gonna have a hard time with this, but you don't really need to worry about it. If you'd like to know, feel free to research this. Once we have this angle calculated though, we can simply just say rigid body dot rotation is equal to the aim angle. And since move and process inputs are already being called in update and fix update, we should be good to go. So when we play the game, we now notice our player is rotating towards our mouse position, which is great. This is exactly what we want. So how do we actually make our player shoot something? I'm gonna drag in another square. This is a 64 by 64 pixel square. I'm just gonna shrink this down to maybe 0.25 in the X and 0.5 in the Y. And I'll change the color to anything. It, it really doesn't matter. It's a white square, so we'll make it, we'll make it yellow. You can make it whatever you want. And I encourage you to actually use sprites here. I'm just being lazy and using squares. So you can imagine that's like the blaster or whatever we want our player to actually be shooting from. We can rename this one to weapon. And we'll actually put this under the player. We'll make it a child. You can just drag that onto your player object. And so now when we play, we should notice that it follows our player with us. 
I'm also going to drag one more square in, and this is just to save us some time later. And I'll do the same thing. I'll shrink it to 0.25 in the X and 0.25 in the Y. And this is going to be what we're shooting from the gun. So this will actually be a bullet. So I'll call this bullet. And I'll drag this bullet object down into our assets folder to make a prefab and delete it from the scene. We now need to make a weapon script and a bullet script. So first thing we'll do is create a C-sharp script and call it weapon. Okay, we'll open this up. So we need to make a couple variables. We need to know what type of bullets the weapon's gonna shoot. So we can make a public game object reference to a bullet. We need to have a position for our bullets to actually be instantiated from. So we can make a public transform firepoint. We'll use this when instantiating a bullet. So we can get rid of the start and update method. All we want our weapon to be able to do is fire. So we can make a public void fire method. And in here what we want to do is simply say instantiate the bullet at the firepoint.position and the firepoint.rotation. This utilizes our two variables we created, but let's make sure we actually hook this up correctly in the editor. So on our weapon, we can drag in our bullet prefab into the bullet variable, and we need to make a firepoint. So what I'm gonna do is right click on our weapon and create empty. And using the move tool, I can just click on this arrow and drag it to the tip of the weapon. And that's fine. So we know I'll rename this to firepoint. And on our weapon, I'll drag firepoint into the variable. For the weapon is to actually call the fire. And while we could have handled the inputs in the update function of this weapon script, I think it makes more sense to do it in the player controller where we're already processing inputs. So in order to do that though, we would need another reference. So we want to make a public weapon weapon. I know that's a little weird, but we're not referencing the game object. We're referencing the script itself that's actually attached to our weapon game object. And then in our actual process inputs method, what we want to say is if input dot get mouse button down, and if we open it up, it requires an integer. So zero is the left mouse button. One would be the right mouse button. We want to just use the left mouse button. So we'll use zero. And we just want to tell our weapon script to fire. And so now as we move our mouse around, our player is rotating. And when we press down the left click button, we are instantiating bullets. But obviously they are not moving or doing anything. So the last thing we need to do is wire up our bullet script. So let's actually create one. We'll right click on assets, create C sharp script, and we'll call it bullet. We'll drag it onto the bullet prefab option. So in our bullet script, in order for our bullet to move, we want to add a rigid body 2D. So that's the first variable we're going to make. We'll say public rigid body 2D. And I'll call mine RB. Back in the editor on our bullet prefab, we'll now add a rigid body 2D to the object. We'll make sure to set the gravity scale to zero because we're in a top down game. We don't want gravity. What we could do is click and hold on our rigid body 2D and drag it into the rigid body variable. Cool. Something that's different from side scroller to top down is we actually want our weapon to give the force of the bullet because we're storing our fire point in the weapon itself. So we can make another variable to store this force. So I'll say public float fire force. And after we instantiate this bullet, what we want to do is give some force to it. So we need to pull the bullet's rigid body. So after we instantiate this bullet, we need to be able to apply a force to it. So what we can say is game object projectile equals this instantiation. So we have a reference to it. And we can now say projectile dot get component of type rigid body 2D and add force of firepoint dot up, which is a vector two direction multiplied by our fire force. And then it also wants a argument of a force mode 2D mode. So we could say force mode 2D, which is an enumeration, dot impulse. We can then set this fire force to something like 20. And now once we play our game, we can press down the left mouse and shoot some bullets, which is great. We're so close now to finishing. You'll obviously notice the bullets are going through the walls, so let's stop that first. This is very simple. On our bullet prefab, we have a rigid body, but we don't have a collider. So since my bullets are square, I'm just gonna use a box collider, but use whatever shape works for you. You can use a circle collider 2D or one of the other ones. It doesn't really matter. So here's my box collider. If I hit play now, 
should notice that they bounce off the walls, which is better, but still not ideal. We want our bullets to disappear when they hit into an object. I'm gonna click on one of the walls and shift click to select all four of my walls and go to tag in the inspector and add tag. We'll create a new one and I'll just call this wall. And then I'll select all the walls and give them the wall tag. For example, I'll just drag in another square, make it red, call it enemy. And I'll make another tag called enemy. And we'll assign it to this red square. Going back to our collider 2D, there is an is trigger boolean field. And so we'll just make sure that's checked to true. This lets us bypass collision, but we're gonna be handling it anyway in a second in script. So with trigger set to true, we'll open up our bullet script and we'll get rid of start and update. And instead we'll say void on trigger enter 2D. And we'll notice we get provided this other collider, which would be the thing we're colliding against. So I'm gonna show you one way of handling multiple different types of objects we want to react against. I'll just be using a switch statement, and I've showed this in some of my other videos, but we could say switch other dot game object dot tag. So we're switching on the tag, and I'm gonna be using some magic strings, but what I'd recommend is making like a static utility class that just holds like constants and use those instead. I've shown that in another video as well. But what we can say is case, and then in strings, wall, which was the tag we just made. Then we want to destroy game object, which is the bullet. And then we want to break. We could say case enemy. I don't have my enemy configured, but if you had, let's say, an enemy health script or something like that, you could say other dot game object dot get component my enemy, you know, script. So this enemy script could be like enemy health or enemy controller or, you know, whatever, however you have your project set up and then like take damage, something like this. And you could actually have on your bullet or your weapon pass in a damage value and then provide that here. But again, I don't have this set up. So you can have a whole bunch of these different cases of how you want to handle it. And one thing I'd like to point out, oh, we'll also destroy it for the enemy as well. Um, one thing I do want to point out. We're, in this case, you're destroying this object and you're instantiating new ones every time. I made a video on object pooling, which you don't have to worry about right now, but it is way more performant implementing something like an object pooler than constantly creating and destroying game objects. In this case, you're just making new references in memory, whereas with object pooling, you'll create like 20 bullets at the start of the scene, and then you just are recycling basically those same game objects and activating them and deactivating them. It's just more efficient. And if you're shooting a lot of bullets, it, it makes sense to implement something like that. But that said, you can now shoot and the game objects are being destroyed with the two different types we have, the enemy and the wall. Just make sure your enemy has a collider 2D on it. That pretty much wraps up our shooting. Some last minute things to show off. One thing you could do is make a particle effect that you can use as an impact effect and then reference a game object and instead of destroying, you could make this impact method where you instantiate this impact effect at the bullet position and then destroy your bullet. And so in your bullet, you could pass in a particle effect prefab. And then when your bullets collide, you'll notice they set off a particle effect. You could also play a sound in here, which I show in a sound tutorial. In your weapon script and your fire method, you could also play a sound here as well. But again, I have a whole other tutorial about how to do that. But with that said, I hope this tutorial helped you guys out. You should now be at a point where you can really customize how you want the shooting to be for your game. I would challenge you guys to look into adding ammo into your game so you can only shoot when you have a certain amount of ammo and maybe different types of weapons. You have the structure all set up for you. You just need to now add more to it. I believe in you. But if this helped you out, let me know, leave a like. If you have problems, join our new Discord and post your problems in there instead. We have a channel for that. And of course, make sure you subscribe. Lots more tutorials on the way and other types of video content, so do it. <laughs>